I'm here to prove to you that you do not need to bring your skis to a professional shop to have them mounted. I'm gonna show you some tips and tricks that I've been using for years to mount my own skis flawlessly, just like this. All right, so a good mount job really all comes down to layout and making sure we put the bindings in the right place before we put any holes into the ski. So this video is about mounting bindings. It's not about where to mount your bindings on your ski. That'll be a different video. But um, what we always use as the reference point is on every boot there's a label or a marking of some sort. In this boot it's uh, embossed right into the mold um, with that A and an arrow pointing down. So that mark needs to line up with where I want the bindings to be mounted on this ski. For me, it's always dead center regardless of the ski. So I'm gonna go ahead and put some masking tape down on the ski to give me a good basis to start putting some layouts on. The last thing we wanna do is just go off of these markings that are right in the, in the graphic, in the top sheet. The reason we don't wanna go off those is, like I just mentioned, this is just a graphic and these can be placed on the ski askew or in a different place each time. So we never go by these markings. We always measure the true ski and then get our measurements um, laid out onto the actual ski itself. So the first thing I did is I have this really nice masking tape. You can get some wide masking tape, tape like this at a hardware store. But I put down a big piece of masking tape and I laid out where the dead center of the ski is. Most people don't mount their boots uh, dead center. Most people mount it back a few uh, centimeters, um, but I mount all of my skis regardless of it being a POW ski, a park, park ski, dead center. So for me, I just have to do one measurement and put that line right down there. And then I also did a left to right center line um, to establish where the true center of the ski is left to right. We don't want our bindings obviously to be crooked um, with reference to the ski. So when we go ahead and mount this ski, we're gonna start with the toe piece. And uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is put a piece of masking tape on the base of this uh, toe piece as well, and then transfer a center line onto that um, toe piece. So here it is. Um, I stuck a piece of masking tape down to this, um, the base plate of this uh, toe piece, and I drew a center line down and I extended beyond the front of the mold and beyond the back of the mold. The reason I did this is when I go ahead and place this binding down onto this other piece of masking tape, um, I'm able to line up the markings on this tape that's attached to the toe piece with the center line of the ski at the front and at the back to make sure it's totally square. Um, and then the next thing I did was I'll take my boot, I'll put my boot into this toe piece, establish where this toe piece needs to be so that that center mold mark on the boot lines up with my center line on the ski. And then I'll go ahead and take that boot out and I'll make a secondary mark um, somewhere on the tape uh, identifying where this tape needs to be lined up on the ski. So we've established where this toe piece needs to be exactly by having a center line drawn on both the ski and on the base plate of the toe piece. We've established where it needs to be front to back by lining the boot up in the actual toe piece and lining it up with this center mark. So the next step, now that we have this nice masking tape down on the ski and we have this masking tape on this uh, binding as well, this is a really cool trick that I like to use and we're gonna put just a few dabs of super glue on the base of this toe piece. It doesn't matter where the glue is as long as it's within the field of the toe piece and you don't need much I just put a little bit on there and then what we're able to, to, to do is locate this binding where we just had it um, and it'll be stuck to the ski temporarily without making any um, you know damaging marks on the top sheet. So I'm going to place this exactly where it needs to live. Make sure the front is lined up as well. And that's perfect and I'm going to go ahead and just press that down and that'll be stuck within a few seconds. And as you can see that is super stuck. It's not going to move um, as I make my marks through the mounting holes into the actual top sheet. So this is the first time we're going to make any kind of Mars or marks into the top sheet itself. All right, so the next step, like I just mentioned, we're gonna be making a mark down onto the top sheet. The way I do this is I take a drill bit that is the exact same size as the hole in the, uh, in the binding, 
and um, I'll put it through and I'll just put a couple, I'll tap it a few times with a hammer just to make a perfectly centered mark. Um, and I'll show you exactly why I do this. Most people could take an awl um, of some sort or a poking kind of device and they could um, make a center mark in there. The problem with that is this, um, the post of this awl is not the same exact size as the hole in this binding. And what can happen oftentimes is while you're trying to make a centered mark in there, you can drift a little bit and end up making that mark slightly off the exact center of that hole. So I use a drill bit that's the exact same size. I place it in all the way through to the top sheet. I give it a few taps. I usually turn the bit about 90 degrees, give it a few more taps and turn it a little bit more again and give it a few more. And the reason I turn this bit is if I were to just tap it in at one point, um, the bit obviously is not a totally symmetrical um, piece of engineering. So I like to turn it, tap it again, and that gives me a nice divot in the top sheet that I can locate my drill bit and actually make the uh, the drill into the into the top sheet and through into the core of the ski. Great, so now that we've made these marks in the top sheet, we can go ahead and remove this binding and that will peel off uh, quite easily. Um, and we can even remove this base tape and get that out of the way. So before we start drilling into the ski again, we're gonna check one more thing just to make sure we don't make a, a critical error. And that uh, thing we're gonna check is the depth of the hole that we need to drill uh, into the core of the ski. So the way I do that is with the other toe piece, I'll take one of the mounting screws and I'll screw it all the way in. Um, and then I'll get a measurement of that depth, how far that, uh, that screw protrudes beyond the base of that plate. And then I'll transfer that depth mark um, onto the tip of a uh, drill bit that I'm going to use. This particular bit, I believe, is a 11 64ths. Um, and then I put a piece of tape there marking um, the depth that I should be drilling to. So now we're ready to go ahead and drill. So one final uh, little detail I like to do before I um, go ahead and mount the binding is I like to chamfer this top edge of this uh, top sheet. Just cut it down a little bit on an angle to remove that loose um, mushrooming top sheet. What can happen is, is when you go to mount this binding, if you don't do that and prep these holes, uh, that top sheet could actually mushroom up around the screw and prevent the binding from sitting down flush against the top sheet. So now it's time to uh, finally put some screws into the ski. And uh, before I do that, I like to put a little dab of um, super glue or gorilla glue or epoxy um, on the tip of each ski or on the tip of each screw. And um, that step is not totally necessary, but it's a nice little extra uh, safe measure to, to do. Right, so with this uh, toe piece uh, totally locked into the ski, I'm just going to go ahead and just make sure that these are torqued to the right, right pressure just by hand. What we don't want to do is continue to ratchet on these screws with the impact driver um, past the point that they're fully seated in their, in their pockets. So that's perfectly mounted. As you can see, it's totally flush to the ski. Um, and if we were to measure this, um, I'm confident uh, that that is perfectly centered and exactly the distance uh, forward on the ski to put my boot right on the mark. So with the toe piece mounted, let's move on to the heel. All right, so the next step we did was uh, we went ahead and uh, stuck some masking tape onto the heel piece, just like we did the toe. And I, again, drew a center line all the way down this base plate and I extended it out onto this masking tape so we can reference that center line through to the center line that's still on our ski. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on here. I lifted the ski up so that the brake can fall without hitting the um, workbench as well. And we're gonna put that toe into the binding that's set at the front and then slide the heel piece up to the point where 
we like to mount it. Every binding is a little different, so I'm not gonna tell you exactly where to mount this. The important thing is that we get it very close uh, front to back wise where we want that, um, and then hold that there. And um, we also want to make sure before we even do this step is that we have travel in this binding to either move forward or back um, if it's not set at the exact perfect location. So that's the beauty of the heel piece on this binding and on pretty much every uh, ski binding in the world is there's a little bit of travel even after you mount it to move it forward or back. So as you can see right here on this binding, um, these posts can screw forward to move the binding forward or they could be screwed out to move the binding back um, in case this uh, binding isn't set in the perfect location or we happen to get a new boot in the future. So I'd like to see that this post is in the middle somewhere. If this was tight all the way down, I'd like to back it off a little bit before I mount this boot. The last thing I want is to mount this binding and the boot doesn't fit in it even after we adjust this heel piece. So with the binding set exactly where I want it, front to back and left to right, I'm gonna go ahead and make a mark again like I did on the front just so when I put the super glue on this, I can reference it exactly to this point. And now, just like we did before, we're gonna put a little bit of super glue on this to set it in place. Super glue is nice because um, it does create a super strong bond, but there is a little bit of working time with it as well, so I'm able to manipulate it and get it to line up exactly where I want it before that glue sets completely. Just like on the toe piece, we're again just gonna repeat the process. And mark, out, mark out exactly where these uh, holes are. All right, we just uh, put that heel piece on. It looks perfect, super excited about that. If you don't have a drill, you could screw these in by hand, um, but it is much quicker and easier with a drill. And now we can go ahead and see how we did. And boom, that is a perfect mount job. Totally centered bindings, um, and as you can see, the bindings are sitting perfectly flush with the top sheet. If you got two skis, just repeat the process. Yeah.